You are listening to the Practicing the Art of Small Business podcast with Shannon Merlo and Julie Parker. Enjoy this conversation about business, leadership, and the self-awareness journey to great success. Welcome, Julie, and welcome, listeners, to Practicing the Art of Small Business, first episode of 2023, episode number 40, Julie. How you doing? I'm pretty good. And we're getting in nice and quick. It's only the 4th of Jan and we're doing episode number, number 40. But that's not too shabby. That's, that's what are they, um, hitting the ground running? We are absolutely sprinting into 2023. I'm going to be the hare that kind of <laughs> sits by the tree <laughs> in, in probably a month, but that's okay. That's, that's okay. okay. As long as we're looking good and optimistic right now, that's the good thing. That's all that matters. Mm. How was your, did you take a little break, Julie? I had a bunch of discretionary time. So I don't tend to take a break or a holiday as such, but I block my calendar off with discretionary time. And so I don't have anyone booking sessions or things I need to really do, but it's filled, not filled, but it's scattered with things that I can do if I feel like it, but if they get pushed into the next day, that's no biggie either. And so I've spent the last few days doing that, which has been lovely and necessary for a couple of the hot, hot days. Our air conditioning broke down, so I was too busy complaining about the heat. (laughs) Didn't have time to do too much work. So it worked well for me. And it's nice to have that bit of space around your head where if you feel like going out and doing some gardening, 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 then that's all good. I like doing gardening. I love it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so it's been lovely, calm, restful, getting plans happening for the coming year, getting the mindset ready for the coming year, having a couple of important discussions around that as well. And so I've at this stage, on the 4th of January, I feel quite focused, which is a delightful space to be in. Mm, well, I too am focused. And I thought, Julie, what we could share for our listeners, for our listeners, with our listeners, to our listeners, what English am I trying we'll just, to use? We'll just do it to them. We're, what we're going to do to you, <laughs> listeners, is... <laughs> what we're going to do to you <laughs> is, um, is share some strategies of how to reflect and plan. So in our, in our previous episode, episode number 39, our Christmas episode that we did with wine, <laughs> uh, which was a delightful, delightful episode... Um, I had the joy of listening to Julie after Julie and I caught up for lunch. So I literally spent almost an entire afternoon with you. So I thank you for that, Julie. It was wonderful. What a Truly pleasure wonderful. that must have it been. Was- oh, my God, I envy you. I wish I could have done that. <laughs> <laughs> it actually was a real pleasure. It really was. So um, in our episode number 39, we did talk a little bit about, you know, reflecting and things like that, but we thought we'd get into the – some some strategies or some ideas to help reflect and then plan for the new year. I think that's what a great think? idea. I think because sometimes I would, you know, in the past years I've been inclined to just kind of pluck goals out of thin air just for the sake of having a goal, but then it's not really all that compelling and it doesn't feel like it's moving me anywhere useful and so you drop the goal pretty quickly. Uh, yeah. So I think this is a, it's a good thing to move through, whoever you are, to th- recheck on how are you identifying your goals and your vision and updating that to make sure it is quite meaningful because it's from the meaning that we draw the meaningfulness that we draw the motivation to stay on Mm -hmm. the path perfect and also i do want to make sure that we uh i just wrote down and so i'm sort of building a roadmap for this episode well while we're doing the episode is i do want to make sure we touch on how we make these lofty ideas into something that's tangible because I think what you said, I've been guilty of going, it's going to be this astronomical number and the universe will just provide. Um, But what's different for me this year is I've really looked at my numbers and I've really gone, right, how am I going to get to that number? And then what strategies am I going to use to end up getting there? So I want to talk about, you know, let's turn these reflections and goals into actual tangibility, tangible things tangible <laughs> tangent, tangent things oh wow yeah and it. listeners believe it or not i'm not drunk in this episode <laughs> not this time. julie might be oh look you know um, i start drinking at nine in the morning a hundred percent um so did you do what did you do 
as a reflective exercise and goal setting exercise for yourself, Julie? I decided to do as many goals achievement workshops that had passed through my social media and email that came available. Oh, really? On top of that, I always do a goals workshop for my clients anyway as well. And I mm-hmm. really believe that it was pulling relevant stuff from each of those workshops. And I probably did four, like big chunky, you know, three hour workshops. Wow. Uh, I pulled elements from all of them. And it, it, you know, with every subsequent one I was doing, I was finding myself getting more and more focused and aligned into exactly what I wanted to do. So I think you would normally think, oh, I'm not going to do that many. I just have to concentrate on one thing. Let's not scatter the brain with too much information. I think in essence it just helped me because I could dispel quite easily the things that weren't totally compelling and then latch onto the one, the few things that were, and it's helped provide me a fair bit of direction. Okay, cool. What, um, what Were there any exercises that stood out for you in particular that you loved? And that's part of why I love a good workshop when they do provide us time to, you know, turn the cameras off and get the exercise happening. And it really was recognising the why behind why are we trying to achieve this goal? Mm. Is it moving us towards our greater vision and our greater purpose if that's been identified? And so that element of it's always very, very useful The other exercise that I found wonderfully useful is when we go into breakout rooms and people are talking about their goals and their strategies and their plans for the year and you're pinching from all of their brilliance as well. And and Mm. so that's a a great path. I'm part of her business, which is Susie Daphnis's group, and it with hers she sent out, I'm going to show you, these huge... Yearly planners. Mm, and you showed me that. And yeah, I really, she, gives I really... you, she gives you two of them so you can scribble on one and then make sure <laughs> you've got the second one once you've identified exactly what you're doing. But I've never done this element before and mm. so this is something that I'll be taking with me where you establish for your whole year what are all the events I'm going to be doing online, master cor- master minds mastery courses, all the all the stuff you're doing because I find myself and Amina, my colleague in business, we're moving more with just the delivery of teachings and education to dental teams rather than the one-on-one work. And so we've got a series of things that we want to do. We're very haphazard with the planning and execution of them all. Oh, we haven't done a three-day conference in a couple of years. Let's do that in a few months' time. But with that yearly planner, she's all on board with that as well. And we both came to that realisation separately, which was quite bizarre. But this whole process of planning the whole year out. So when you're doing your promotions, you're not promoting two or three different things. You're only promoting one clear product at a time. So we're not confusing the market. Everyone knows exactly where we're at and we're devoting the correct time and energy repetition of message to make sure that it's being impactful and that we are not both in our own separate social media and separate email lists bombarding people with the same message. We've actually got it planned out. You do this and I do this. And so moving forward, that will evolve and perfect itself, you know, if it can ever be, it's never perfect, that will evolve over time and correct itself as we make minor adjustments. But in essence, we're going to find out what, hap- what what works for a year and repeat, 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 mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it feels good. It feels organised and well considered compared to what awesome. I've been doing in the past. <laughs> <laughs> Monday, what Actually, do I do? Oh, I might as well send this promo out. <laughs> <laughs> What's in it? What, what haven't I touched recently? Let me do that. <laughs> That's right. Um, I like the visual element of that and that's one thing that I've I've started doing a lot more of is actually putting things visually in front of me because I I can easily uh, get lost in the weeds of the day-to-day when I'm not kind of presented with the, hey, it's only a week away or it's next yeah. month. Have you thought about all of this? You know, I think um, I, I'm... I can be quite optimistic with what I can get done and, and when I see it there, um, I think it makes a big difference. So I think having having our our 
the detail of our plan sitting there visually is really helpful. Mm, mm. For sure. And I will be whacking it up on the wall so I can look at it all the time. And when I do my workshops with my clients, let me see if I've got, I've got these beautiful, which I can't find where to buy them anymore. I think they're unavailable, but these big, you know, desktop for people who are listening and not looking at the YouTube. You um, can get that. That looks beautiful, by the way. It's this is an old one already. I've already updated. <laughs> Sorry, um, <laughs> I've already updated things. And you and I spoke about how the club's going to change a little bit over the coming months. But I think that things like this. And this is where, if you're updating it, rewriting it every month or every quarter, you're making sure that what you're looking at all the time is all the stuff you really wanted to achieve. And I think we do just forget how compelling it, the messages are, the thoughts that we had, and we need to remind ourselves, oh, that's right, these were the opportunities, I haven't done these things, and that's right, that was the big goal, the big why, which I, you know, is so compelling, it's still so compelling. We just need to constantly feed that motivation. And who said that, that brilliant line, um, motivations like brushing your teeth, you've got to do it every day? Oh. Or, you know, um, yeah, motivations like te- tooth health. Why do you think we brush our teeth every day? Oh, look, you know, there's somebody out there that goes, you're getting that quote completely wrong, but I know what she's talking about. I know what she's stumbling through. <laughs> but why do we think that we will be motivated once and that will sustain itself? No, we have to feed that motivation, re-motivate ourselves every day, just like brushing our teeth. But I brush twice a day, so I might try to re-motivate twice a day. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you're pretty motivated though I think I think mm. it's probably more it's that it's that front of mind yes you know because we get I think we get caught we I I'm not going to talk for the entire audience of people listening um but you know I get caught in the weeds and it's when you lift your head up and you go oh hang on what were those big goals actually I haven't been deprioritize that because I'm working in my business and I really need to work on my business but what am I working on my business on again so I think that's where having like from a business perspective strategic plans as well that you're always looking at on a monthly basis what are the activities that we're doing that are feeding our strategic plan is really important um keeping yourself on track and that's one of the (laughs) classic holes that we all fall into we identify the goal but we don't identify the strategies and the tasks that will get us to the goal the things that we have to do every day to get us absolutely there. yeah absolutely so yeah yeah mm. very nice how about you how was your preparation period for a good 2023 i i did a, a number of really cool little activities um one uh, you have in your beautiful planner that julie oh, if you did listen to yeah. episode number 39 julie offered beautiful. to give me her, which is called my awesome planner, which I, and it is awesome. Here's um, mine, and it is, and it is awesome. And so I've started using that. And in Julie's awesome diary, which is my awesome diary, um, it had the love letter from Marshall Goldsmith. But I was doing another program and wrote a love letter, and that was really a beautiful reflective exercise. Um, it, it the idea is that with the, the love letter that I wrote, it was I am was writing myself a love letter. I was, hang on, I I today was I writing a love, love letter. I love your eyes and the way your hair falls over your shoulder. <laughs> You're so pretty. You're so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> the, light, the room lights up when your smile like, walks in. <laughs> Roses are red, violets are blue. <laughs> Whenever I sleep, I think of you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, I am obviously not a poet. But anyway, back to my love letter. So the love letter was from me today writing to myself from a year ago. And basically telling myself about what had happened through the year, um, particularly the adversity through the year and how I'd gotten up and what what are the things that I was grateful for at, at the end of that year. It's actually a really, really powerful um, 
think validation exercise, um, you know, because I think that if you're still standing, if you're still breathing at the, at the end of any year, even if it's been a tough year, it's sort of like, well, hang on, we're still going. And even if it was a great year, you've got the opportunity to say like, during the hard times, where there, there's always going to be hard times in life, but during the hard times, you rose up and look where you are now. And it's it's a it was a really powerful exercise. So I really loved doing that one. So that one was really fun. Nice. Um, I did a a B hag using um, neural. I really need to. Is it neurological levels? Yeah, neurological levels. Anyway. So the BHAG is the big, hairy, audacious goal. And I think that came from, was that a Stephen Covey? Hmm. Because there's wigs. He has, no, he has wigs. He has wildly important Jim goals. Collins. Jim Collins. Yeah. Um, and the wigs is in the four disciplines of execution, which is Sean Covey, which is. Son of. Um, which is the son of. So your wigs are in here. That's, and your, that's on my side table right now. That's on my there bedside table right now, that book. Yep. Again, if you're not watching us, I'm holding up the Four Disciplines of execution. execution, which is actually a fantastic book, particularly talking about strategy and getting stuff done. So we'll come back to that at the end. Um, so um, my BHAG, what was different about the BHAG is that – when I wrote it, I needed to write it in a way of in the time that I, I achieved the BHAG, where am I going to be? Who am I going to be with? What am I going to be seeing? What am I going to be feeling? What am I going to be hearing? What are the, um, what are the, what's my identity when I've achieved that goal? So it was really like visualization in a really strong way around, um, a goal, but really embodying the goal on all of the neurological levels, like what values did I live to achieve that goal? So it wasn't just, I'm going to achieve this. It's all about how I'm going to evolve as a person mm. and that person will achieve that goal and what will I have as a result of that goal. So it was a, a really great exercise to, I think, build uh, build a foundation on the goal more than like Here's what the business is going to do. No, no, no. Here's what the business is going to do. But also, as a result of that, I've achieved this and I feel this way and I believed this and I attracted this and, um, mm. you know, quite narcissistic because it's all about me, me, me. But Well, <laughs> when, but no one, no one's going to say come and establish goals and help me achieve and achieve them in my world. It's, it is all about this. is an area that is all about you. It's a lot of self-reflection and self-work. And the identity yeah. stuff is just so impactful. We really need to be very aware that unless we truly believe we are capable of living a happy life after we've achieved those goals, we will try to avoid that space. Absolutely. And and part of that BHAG, so it, it was a narrative, like a story that that I wrote around the BHAG. So it wasn't just what my BHAG is. It was the story around who I am, what I think, how I feel, what I see, all of that sort of stuff. There was also um, looking at, you know, how ecological is the goal. So running it through um, various – actually, I might just um, – do you want to just, Julie, either entertain the crowd or we'll pull this out? <laughs> pull this <laughs> particular like search, I can entertain the crowd. That's good. <laughs> Let me entertain by stating that – one of the last things I listened to around identity because Charles Coves, my awesome husband, was one of the one was one of the first people that said this is the impact of identifying identity. And I was doing that was part of me immersing myself in all the goals stuff over the last month. And I looked at Tony Robbins and what he talks about with identity. And he had a good is it an analogy or metaphor? I always confuse the two of a thermostat that. If you are have your thermostat set to 28 degrees, yet your goals are ones that a 30-degree person would achieve, then when you start to move beyond the 28 degrees, your subconscious will pull you back. No, no, you're not a 30-degreeer. That's not you. You have to come back to 28 degrees because that's where, comfort where we're comfortable. That's where we're safe. That's where we know what's expected of us. That's where we know exactly who to be 
And so we think that, oh, no, once I get the goal, then I can expand my identity because it's the getting of the goal that expands the identity. But we can't get the goal until we do expand our identity. So we need to put ourselves at a 30 degree, recognize what is 30 degree? What does it mean? What do they think? What are their values? What are their actions? What are they doing? What are they thinking? How are they behaving? And only when you're doing the 30 degree stuff will you achieve the goals of the 30 degree. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Is that entertaining for the, the crew for a little bit? Well, does Thank that give you, you enough time? Thank you for putting your jester <laughs> outfit on and entertaining. <laughs> 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 so I do have my the document that uh, I was referring to, and this is well formed conditions for BHAG. So. I think well-formed conditions is a NLP thing. I might be making that up. I'm I've very happy. never actually come across it. Well-formed oh. conditions. Yeah. Um, and so the well-formed conditions for my big, hairy, audacious goal was um, needed to be stated in the positive. So that's very important that you don't want to say, um, I don't want this to happen. A lot of us... Um, you would know this from coaching. A lot of the time when you're talking to people, they'll, they're they very comfortable telling us what they don't want, but quite often they're not able to articulate what they do want and, and bring that positive. And sometimes that's what we do as coaches is kind of, you know, okay, I'm hearing that you don't you don't want this and this and this, but what do you want? And a lot of people stall. So in the BHAG, it was really important to make sure that we were focused on what is the positive stuff that we want. Um, initiated and maintained by you, I think that focus, that's that locus of control. You know, we can't set a goal if the goal has to be achieved by someone else. Obviously, there's other people who can be involved in it, but we have to be at the centre of the influence of achieving that BHAG, otherwise it's not going to happen. Correct. Um, specific people don't sensory- like to do exactly what we say, tell them to do all the time. And sometimes we don't even tell them, we just expect them to do the things the way we'd like them done. Yeah. That doesn't work yeah. either. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, specific sensory-based description of outcome and steps. So that's that, how do you feel? How do you think? How do you, um, what do you hear? What do you taste? What do you smell? That sort of thing. What's the taste of money? Cold hard cash. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm brave um, enough with my immune system to actually just lick the whole cold hard cash. <laughs> mm, it'd be like licking your mobile phone. Like that would be like the worst. You wouldn't That's... want to lick your mobile phone? No. Oh. <laughs> Julie's <laughs> looking at me for those. Who are... no, Julie's looking thinking, at me like, that would be a long list don't? if we're just listing things we don't want to lick. <laughs> <laughs> In episode number 40, we discuss. Go for five hours. Of- <laughs> um, that's not what this episode is about. Um, but- How distasteful, get it? I know, right? Distasteful. Ah, ba dum ching. Okay, <laughs> it is your goal is ecological in every sense. So, with the BHAG, we needed to think about like, how is this going to affect every other part of my life if. And when I achieve it, because you were right with that temperature gauge, if there's resistance to the goal because it's not going to give us everything that we want, we won't do it. So, for example, if my big, if my BHAG meant that I would have to work, you know, 5 a.m. to 8 p.m., I know there's no way that I'd do it because... What's really important to me is that I can get up in the morning and go to the gym. That's one of my found. So I'm, n- there's no way that I'm going to change my life to accommodate a change that's not going to allow the gym to be in there. So these are the things where you're like, what's actually important? Is, am I still going to be able to have the gym? Will I still, will the achievement of this goal still allow me to build a relationship with my significant other? Will it allow me to spend time with my children? Or is it so big and hairy and audacious, they're going to take a back seat and I, that doesn't align with how I want to live my life and therefore the goal needs to be reset. So that really important to think about how the goal will affect all the other parts of your life. Nice. I like it. Yeah. And make sure that it's aligned. Um, uh, more than just one way to achieve the BHAG. So you want to make sure that there's flexibility in the achievement of the goal because we can keep running the same track and not getting the outcome that we want. 
but it means that we're not going to get the BHAG. If we say there's lots of ways to achieve the BHAG and we just have to have behavioral flexibility and see if we're not getting results here, we've got to take another pathway. So you needed to make sure that there are other ways to achieve things. Um, the first step is specific and identifiable. Uh, sorry, the first step is specific and achievable. So I thought that was, you know, so make sure we can have these big lofty goals, but if I don't know what the first thing is I'm, that I'm going to do, then, you know, I'm, I'm not going to achieve it. Um, does it increase choice? Um, does achieving the BHAG uh, automatically provide you with more resources and therefore make you a more flexible person? Um, yeah. So does it, does it increase your choice? Does it increase your choice in life? So what I what I mean by that, I think what they meant by that is, again, if achieving the BHAG meant that I was going to be working from 5 a.m. to 8 p.m., does that increase the choices in my life? No, not really. It means that I'm, my self-care is probably not going to be as good. My social life's not going to be as good. Um, not going to be able to spend as much time. So again, you know, it does it, it does it give me greater flexibility in my life, um, or less flexibility. And if it's less, then you're not going to achieve it because there's going to be hmm. challenge. Because sometimes that is the, a person's BHAG, isn't it? That I go to the next level within the business. So it's not about me in the minutiae getting this stuff done. I'm hiring other people to do that. We're getting more clients to be able to do that. Therefore, the, that means that I do have more time to spend with family on hobbies, creating more of a lifestyle. Yeah. Exactly. Nice. Exactly. So those, those, those were the things that I wrote in my BHAG, but the difference with this BHAG was the, the story, the narrative. And one of the final things that I did, which was very powerful, was I wrote my eulogy, Julie. Crikey. You know, I don't like to ever put out there that I'm ever going to die because I figure I'm just going to live forever. <laughs> forever, forever. So, well, worse than that, I actually had to calculate when I was likely to well, die. This is, the, this is the element that I'm like, oh, crips. So how, mm -hmm. how did you calculate that? Um, or did they three times guidance three minus that? four, square root of five, <laughs> carry the three. <laughs> <laughs> no, so they sort of, they, they suggested, um, when I say they, um, this is uh, through Donald Miller's Hero on a Mission. Hero on a mission, time. Donald Miller. Mission. That sounds like an interesting book. <laughs> it is, Julie. Thank you for suggesting that. Has it, it provided any form of inspiration to your work for the coming year, Shannon? It may have, Julie. Oh, well, I'll be intrigued to hear about that. Mm, so tell, tell us more, more about the usual eulogy. I'll we'll tell you more. That. Ask about <laughs> Shannon's year coming up. Okay, yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, the, the average man will live this long. The average female will live that long. If yeah. you're in good health, you can probably add five years. If your health is not so good, you've got to take five years or, or what have you. And you just, you just test it. We are not, we are not kind of creating a BHAG. It's not a prescription. <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. But the idea of this, um, so one of the things I love about Donald Miller's frameworks and books is he um he was originally a screenplay writer wow and so all of his business stuff is all about narrative about heroes and guides and villains and victims and things like that so a lot of the marketing stuff for them is about you you've got to position yourself as the guide mm -hmm. and your customer is the hero and there's you know he talks about that from a from a narrative perspective and it's really brilliant and this book is the same and with the death the, the death date <laughs> the the language he uses is it creates narrative traction because in a story there's always a ticking clock right mm. there's always something that people have to get to or finish or you know Literally, the bomb's going to go off at this time. Yep. And that's what creates tension in the movie. Mm. And in our life, if we don't have a tension point of time, then there's no pressure to actually. Yes, you've explained that well. You've explained it very, very well. Yes, I get yeah. that. And so when I looked at this, I did my numbers and I was like, oh, Ooh, I don't have much time left. <laughs> I'm going to have to go out. 
<laughs> I don't even have time for this. I'm going to die in 30 years. <laughs> um, so th- we talk about that. And then, and then in the eulogy, mm. it really, the beauty of the eulogy was to, instead of setting a resolution for the year, you're essentially setting a resolution for your entire life. Yeah. So this is about the person that you are. So when you think about your eulogy, you know, what are the ways that you want people to remember you as, you know, when, when they experienced you, what did you want them to say about you? Mm-hmm. You know, were you um, positive and uplifting and inspirational and supportive and loving and generous and kind? Is that what you want people to say? Well, then you've got to live that person. You've got to do the stuff. You've got to do the behaviours, yeah. Exactly. It talks about um, the community that you built and that's something that's really interesting, I think, especially coming out of um, our years of (gasps) that that illness that shall not be named um, (laughs) where, where, you know, our communities have probably broken down a little bit. You know, what is a community that you actually want to foster? So instead it, it brings intentionality around who are the people I really want to hang out with, like, but not just hang out. Like I want to foster a connection with these kinds of people to achieve this kind of goal. Um, he talks a lot about logo therapy, which is um, Victor Frankl developed the psychological framework for logo therapy, and it defines three things that are needed to create a life of meaning. And they are a project to work on, a redemptive perspective for your suffering and a community of people you love. And if you don't know who Viktor Frankl is, he uh, wrote Man's Search for Meaning. I think I mentioned that before. It's an amazing book. He wrote it um, or he was writing the logotherapy frameworks while he was in the concentration camp. He actually had the book sewn into um, his clothes so that he and he survived the concentration camps and what he noticed within that was who are the people who are surviving and why are they surviving what makes them different to the people who are not we're all in the same circumstances um turns out it was optimism yeah Um, yes and where did we reconnect at the center Mm -hmm. of optimism with victor purton the Centre for Optimism. Go to the website. It's fantastic. Continue on. Exactly. <laughs> so in my eulogy, um, that really, that was a really, really powerful exercise to, this is, again, this is identity at end of life. So really thinking about who am I at the core of my being? What are the things that I invested my time and energy in? What impacts did I have in the world? And really kind of nailing in that you now have this time limit to achieve that person. Mm. Um, So that was incredibly powerful. And so that was as part of the Hero on the Mission. And I did it obviously because uh, I'm running workshops. Are you really? I don't think I'm all workshopped out yet. I could do with another workshop. Tell Mm -hmm. us more about the one that you've got planned. If you would like to write your eulogy, um, I have two workshops. One is an online workshop and one is a face-to-face workshop going through the Hero on a Mission framework and the idea is that it creates a plan to live a meaningful life and we go big picture from eulogy into um, a number of routines that you run to actually embed that eulogy and the actions that you're doing every day to achieve that identity and those those goals, those projects that what you work on, those communities that you create and things like that. So the online version is on the 20th of January, 2023. That's a three-hour web web workshop. And the 21st of January is a Saturday, and we're doing a four-hour face-to-face in South Yarra in Melbourne. And we will put put the links in our show notes below. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I'm very it. excited by this. There is a different energy doing it in person. If you are local to the area, I would suggest that you jump on with the four-hour one. I mean, the three-hour one, it, it, these sort of things are always so incredibly useful and they can be pivot points, you know, the the fork in the road that you all of a sudden you're going off into a, a different path that's going to end you up in a completely def- different destination than what you had normally planned. And so unless we get really intentional about what our behaviours, our actions, 
uh, moving forward, we end up just managing every day just with a good intention, just to be good for the day. But it's not specific enough for us to do anything different outside our default patterns and habits. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's that's the thing. So that's what I'm also loving about the Hair on a Mission um, is because there's a really great pathway, like a funnel, essentially. We've got really big picture. Then we get through some more detail right into how do we now do this as a ritual so that we every day are behaving in the way that we want to achieve that and be this person. So, um, yeah, I'm really, I'm really excited. I'm, I'm excited, you know, me, Julie, I'm, I'm going to just bang on a little bit about me as you, <laughs> you know, me, I, I don't, I, I love the sound of my own voice, but I don't like to do things unless I truly believe that they are impactful. And so I'm running the workshops because I've done the work in this and I truly believe it's going to help people to live a meaningful life. So um, come along. Yeah. Not just Julie. Everyone else is listening. <laughs> That's right. I'm just talking to Julie. Julie. Just That's like, right. Julie. Other people come should come along. along as well. But I agree. It, it, living a meaningful life, time just goes so quickly. Where did 2022 go? It's gone in the flash. And it's not, but we do need that sense of urgency over the things that we want to achieve because time does go fast and it's wonderful that it goes fast and it's filled with wonderful things, good things, bad things, the whole range. That's what, you know, the gamut of, of everything that is involved in life. But one of the things that I'm excited about is the in-person one because when you start building connections of like-minded people all in the same journey, it's amazing how much more enriching and engaged that process is. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. exactly exactly well I'm excited for it as well so yay so they were the three reflective big reflective activities and goal planning activities that I did and I guess um the love letter was really good from a reflective perspective reflective perspective look at me roaming again I am a poet um um, especially I, I think it's validating I think it's very validating to write to your past self to say, here's what you learned, here's what changed, here's what's good, here's what could be better, here's what you'll learn, you know, that sort of stuff. So I thought that was really good. Um, I've got with my BHAG much more clarity around that goal um, and why I want to achieve it and what it's going to give me. And so I'm much more motivated about the achievement of that goal than I've ever been. And then the eulogy is kind of taking it next level because now I'm really on a daily basis living with complete intention around that that BHAG is part of the achievement of my projects that are written in my eulogy. And by the way, the eulogy is not something that you're going to put in your will and ask people to read for you. <laughs> it's, it's a tool. It's a tool that you'll use to. You'll have a group uh, of people in front of you going, "That's bullshit. That's bullshit. It's not that nice." Didn't <laughs> <laughs> do that much for oh. me. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is to guide you on your journey. I love it. I See, love it. So that's what I did. And you know what? Goals, identification and creation of plan of getting there and the support you require to get there, to get all this stuff done, that is yet another skill of practice makes perfect. When you first identify a goal and you don't achieve it, do you start identifying yourself as someone that just – states goals and this doesn't achieve it and I I now fall into that bucket and that's me no just recognize that with every additional year with every additional goal with every additional plan with every additional insight that you find and you start applying you're getting better and better and this year I really do feel like this past year I did achieve a lot of the stuff that I was setting out to achieve and it's through you know writing that letter of thanks to yourself Thanks, past self, for all the things that you did that helped me achieve to where I'm right now. And it gives you the faith in yourself that when you, you know, that's the other letter that Marshall Goldsmith talks about, now write a letter to your future self thanking yourself from this point now to then for all the things that you're going to do to make sure that you do achieve the goal. It gives you more faith in writing that letter because you are clearly identifying where you've achieved in the past and what you've achieved in the past. And sometimes progress can be so incremental that we don't see it, it's not tangible enough for us to put a hook into it. But when we do a reflection 
And of course, you know, in the in the planner, the Miles and Planner, there are weekly reflections and monthly reflections, and it's good to do these sort of workshops to have yearly reflections. So to remind ourselves, we are progressing. We're getting places. We're not just standing still. Yeah, yeah. So in terms of not standing still as well, should we talk now a little bit about how to get clear, like what we should be doing yeah. uh, to make sure that it's not just a big lofty goal without any legs on it? Correct. Let's put some legs on it. <laughs> you know I like legs. <laughs> um, so coming back to the four disciplines of execution and also I'm going to overlay some marketing concepts in this and some finance. This is going to be fun, Julie. Wow, this is multifaceted. Mm-hmm. I love it. So um, in order to achieve my BHAG, I needed to actually put some numbers on it, right? How am I actually going to get there? This is, so my BHAG was a, uh, was a financial goal, actually. Um, if I wanted to, if I was more connected with a human goal, I could kind of say, I'm going to connect with these number of humans. But for me, it was a financial goal. But then I needed to work out, okay, well, how many products am I going to sell? And in what thing? And how much time is that going to take for me to do that? Because like you, Julie, as a service-based business owner, if we're selling time for money, you know, what's the risk of that? If we're actually developing product, we need to be taking time away from time for money to develop that product, that sort of thing. So I needed to get really clear on how many people need to come in the door in order to achieve that. Then I needed to look at my product verticals and go, you know, this or this or this, or what products am I going to be generating um, in order to achieve that big hairy goal? Um, but one of the things that got, I got reminded about today, I'm going to come back to the disciplines of execution, but if I've got a number of this is the number of people I need to get at the bottom of my marketing funnel, those number of people who buy, I need to be building up, you know, between 30 and 50% each time from a marketing conversion funnel. So at the top of my funnel, I have to be talking to X number of thousand people, let's say, that then 30% are going to come into the, from the awareness part of the funnel to the, um, con, uh, not even the consideration, awareness. Oh, I haven't done my homework on funnels today. Maybe <laughs> we could actually, maybe our next episode could be a bit That's of a, a idea. Yeah. reminder where I can talk deeper about funnels. So if this is all uh, new stuff for you, funnel talking and awareness and consideration and decision and all that sort of language, go to episode number 41, <laughs> which is going to be about marketing and marketing funnels and customer journeys because that might be fun to talk about. Nice. Okay. So, but I, what I needed to do is go, okay, well, if I want this many bums on seats, essentially, if I want to sell this many units of my product, what does the, what does each part of my funnel look like in terms of getting there? So if I want, um, I think, I think it's, if I, if I want one person to buy, I need to talk to a hundred people at the top of the funnel. Sounds right. You know, Sounds exhausting 30, and it is exhausting. <laughs> Yeah but, yeah, but this is the thing. This is what we need to consider. And so one of the one of the last things, um, which I think is the disciplines of execution, comes in. I had a chat with a mentor of mine before Christmas, and he's a he's a bit of a he's a big dog, and he's a straight shooter, and he doesn't like how I run around answers because he's like Shannon, how are you actually going to get there? And I'm like, ah, it'll work out. I'll just turn up to some networking events. It's fine. He's like Shannon. How are you actually going to commit? Like you, you need to do this and da, 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 da. And he really kind of helped me to put it into, okay, now on a weekly basis, what am I doing that's going to get me those, you know, 100 people in the top of the funnel to then have one drop out? And, and that might be 100 on a daily basis. It might be 100 on a, depending on what you're selling. But you've really got to think about how you're going to get there. And the disciplines of execution talks about lead and lag measures. God, this has been a, sorry, I'm going to oh, lose everyone. Like there's so many aspects. Oh, oh. I know, right? Oh, <laughs> sorry if I lose. I think it's a core wrapped up in one hour. Yeah, yeah. No, well, this uh, I'll do this really, really quick. I think, have we talked lead and lag measures before, Julie? Uh, you have with me whether your past um, learning opportunities that you've supplied to be, but not in the podcast, I don't believe. 
Oh, have I not? We should do another episode on lag. lead and lag measures, lag. Um, KPIs and lead and lag measures. So really, again, um, that's probably going to be, oh, I don't know, we might say episode 42, but we might find something more exciting to talk about before then. Um, your lag measure is essentially your success number. And let's just say that we're going to earn, you know, a million dollars. That's our lag measure. Our lead measure is all of the activity that we do that leads to the achievement of that $1 million goal. So it might be we attend uh, one networking event per week and we do two coffee chats per week and we do um, we run 10 ads per whatever. So it's all of the activity that leads to the achievement of the lag measure. And the lag measure might be something else. So it might be you know, number of new clients, it might be whatever. Um, so he forced me to look at my lead measures to put tangibility around my lag measures, which then allowed me to look at how am I actually going to achieve my BHAG. So it's really important when you're doing goal setting that you do actually get into the weeds of what am I actually going to do to achieve this? Otherwise, we're leaving it all up to the universe. And I love, oh, look, I'm, I'm very into spiritual kind of abundance thinking, but if it's like, I'm going to earn a million dollars, but I'm not going to do anything. It's just going <laughs> to come to me. The clients are just going to fall at my feet. They're just going to appear. Um, it, look, that's just not... I'm very happy for someone to say, no, no, literally that just happened. I just put it out to the universe and I did nothing and it just happened. <laughs> I would go, well, sure, on that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. The responsibility lies squarely on our shoulders to do the stuff that is required for us to be able to achieve the things that we need, that we would like to achieve. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So that's... That's my reflections and goal setting. Who we baby? Well, that's very big and very wonderful and very wonderful. And this is, you know, a lot of people go, oh, this time of year where we set goals again. Oh my God, how boring. But, but it's an exciting time when you are looking at the coming year as a, as 365 days filled with opportunity where I can have an influence over where I am this time next year and I've got mm. a very powerful influence over that, then it is a very exciting time. And you mm. feel like you're, you know, on that line scratching down, what are you not crouching down in the starting blocks about to take off and and it's and we can really do a lot to help ourselves on the journey rather than just have that crossed fingers approach. And then, you know, it keeps coming back to me that Tony Robbins thing that your fingers crossed, life happens, and it's happening to you. And all these things happen to stop you from being able to achieve your dreams. No, life is happening for us. And it's up to us to seek out the opportunity and the benefit to the things that are happening around us so we can leverage off it and just achieve greater and greater things year upon year. It's a wonderful thing. And, you know, for all the parents out there too, if your children see you establishing clear goals, developing strategies that can achieve those goals, identifying the tasks that are required and the accountability to self to get those things done, that's teaching them a freaking brilliant lesson in life. Mm, yeah, it, it absolutely is. It absolutely is. It's um, very powerful, very powerful. So I don't know, what do you want to, do you want to, Wrap, wrap it up. It up wrap it up. I think wrapping it up sounds like a good idea. The only additional thing uh, is that with if you are out there and you have identified your goals and the tasks that are required by you to get those goals done, just make it as easy as possible for you to maintain a sense of importance and urgency over those things, whether it's an online calendar, a written journal, a accountability partner that you check in with once a month to make sure you're remaining on track, whatever it just recognize what inspires you, what motivates you, what makes you feel, what, what, what creates that tension in you. Mm. So you, so you mm. do take that urgent action over the things and just, and if you don't know yet, try different things and recognize what works well for you and then just keep on going, keep on going. And actually, before we do close, I'm sorry, we were going to wrap, but one of the other things that um, was important in the BHAG was looking, or at least goal setting, was 
um, how do you stack your accountabilities? So one of their suggestions was you have multiple ways to be held accountable to your goals. And that way there's more reinforcement. You've got more people that you're reporting to or more people who've bought into your story of what are you trying to achieve? And then, you know, it obviously starts with sort of your partner, um, your coach, but also uh, are there a, is there a community of people that you can join a mastermind group? Like you talked about those breakout rooms as being really useful to bounce ideas off and things like that. But, but those suggestions are probably just three basic suggestions that everyone should, could have. And when I say coach, I mean, you know, your accountant, a coach, a friend, a mentor, a some, a someone who you see in a position that if you come to them and you haven't achieved that goal, you're actually going to feel pretty uncomfortable. So, yeah, stack your accountabilities is another one. Love it. Love it. Love you. <laughs> oh, I'm looking forward to the 21st. I might do the 20th as well, get a double banger. Not a double banger, a double <laughs> dose of Shannon's brilliant. To be fair, you probably could. Um, it's, it's exactly the same content, but um, we're going to cut, go away with some drafts. And so you could actually attend both um, to get uh, double the opportunity to refine your eulogy and the things like that. So you are very welcome to attend. Both, I hope you're going to be prepared to be impressed with my eulogy. By the time I die, I'm going to be so friggin' awesome. More awesome than I am already am. I already think I'm friggin' awesome. <laughs> I was going to say, Julie, um, I don't know how why you're going to write your eulogy. You're pretty awesome as you are. So. I'll just write where things are right now and I impress the fans <laughs> with everybody. That's for sure. <laughs> A love letter to my current self. Um, <laughs> more passion than what we thought. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's time for a rapidy wrap wrap. Rapidy wrap wrap. Okay, well, I will wrap this up by saying that there are multiple ways to reflect and plan your goals out. But what's most important is that I think that you do it. Um, after doing it uh, in a way that's very structured this year, I absolutely and more motivated than I've ever been before. So I can highly recommend it. You, Julie, suggested um, the why. I think that's a really important thing. Why is this goal important? So really have a good why around what you're doing. Julie talked about those breakout rooms and borrowing from other people. So having a community of people that you can work with is really important. Um, have a visual reminders of what your goals are. Use different methodologies in order to achieve your reflections and goal planning and make sure that your goals have tangible legs on it, on the achievement of it, and have a routine on a daily basis that helps you to look at the calendar that you visually put on the wall <laughs> to remind you of what you're doing. Does that pretty much wrap it up? That's good. And I just thought, yes, that visual calendar on the wall, it's not wallpaper. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just for gazing and it becomes just part of the decor. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, um, those post-it notes, um, they, they were my goals for last year and yeah. I haven't looked at them. I know. Um, I thought to myself, oh, I should have noticed whether those post-it notes actually change at all and I they they, they do. Quite often I actually use that wall for more brainstorming thought nice. stuff but that was um, – they were gold. So my, my <laughs> at the top it says OKR and then my blue ones are um, areas like marketing, personal, uh, fun, um, and then the pink ones were the, the goals. Um, do you know what? I actually – do you know what? I actually did achieve a lot that was on then and now I'm looking at that. You put gold stars on those ones. Well – I think they were for July, but I kind of achieved them by the end of the year, so that's good. Fantastic. No, it doesn't matter what month you did it when you're living it here and now. I love that. Yeah. True. Beautiful. True. Congratulations. Well, here's to a really strong 2023, a very optimistic 2023. I've been seeing on Facebook a lot of messages saying, oh, your last year was so terrible and all the rest because there's so many reasons why some people are still quite distressed over everything that's going on around them. They still haven't got their jobs back from mandated vaccines and all the things. But um, that 2023 is a year we, all, we always have to bring hope into everything. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Hope well, for better. Well, to you, Julie, I hope that you have an amazing year. I'm very grateful that we are working with each other again in 2023. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, this was born of COVID lockdown communications via Zoom, and we're still going beyond the lockdowns. We survived lockdowns and we keep surviving. <laughs> Clouds and silver linings. Yeah, that's it. Well, thank you, silver lining. <laughs> and <laughs> thank I you. will see you for episode number 41, Funnels and Customer Journeys. Mm-hmm. Gonna be fun. Woo-hoo. Speak to you soon. <laughs>